Hello and welcome to the section of the circuit analysis tutor. Here we're going to continue working with the mesh current method of circuit analysis, but we're going to introduce a little more complicated circuits. Uh, specifically, we're going to introduce uh, dependent sources. So a uh, voltage source or a current source that depends on another uh, voltage or current that's, that's existing in the circuit. So we're following the same path that we did for the node voltage. We originally talked about the node voltage method. We solved several problems. And then we talked about node voltage method when you have dependent sources. And if you remember, basically what we did is for the node voltage method, we solve the problems exactly the same way that, that uh, we originally do. We set the equations up exactly the same way, but what we found is that when we had these dependent sources, when we wrote our node voltage equations down, we didn't have enough equations to solve the problem. So we had to write what we call a constraint equation. It's just an extra equation we need to write because we have this source that's dependent on something else. So we need an extra equation to help us out. That's basically what we're going to do here. When you see a mesh current problem or you're asked to solve a circuit with mesh currents, what you need to do is just set the mesh currents up the same way that you have before. And that's why I spent so much time giving you practice with the basics of mesh current uh, method you know, prior to now. And then when you get done, you're going to find that you don't have enough equations to actually solve the thing. So you're going to need to write a constraint equation that's going to involve your dependent source variable, the, whatever, whatever it is in your circuit. And so that's how this is you know, basically going to work for every problem. So in this particular problem, it's a great problem to start with. What we're asked to do is find out what is the power delivered by the independent source. So in this case, we have an independent voltage source. And notice that the voltage that, that appears on the terminals of this source is dependent on whatever the current, what we're labeling it I phi, but in this case it's labeled to show you it's basically the current flowing through the 50 ohm resistor. So whatever the current flowing through here is, if we multiply it by 20, that's going to be the voltage uh, that appears across those uh, terminals there. So this voltage source here. So we've got a nice circuit. We have another independent source up here, a uh, resistor network, and then of course we have the dependent voltage source down below. So if we're trying to find the power delivered um, by this source, then what we're going to need to do is figure out what is the voltage across the terminals and what is the current flowing through it, because we know that power is I times V, right? And the sign of it is going to depend on the direction everything is going, if it's negative or positive. But we'll get to that later. But the bottom line is it's going to be the current flowing through the source, or supplied by the source, uh, multiplied by the voltage. Of course, we don't know what the voltage is because it's 20 times this current. So it's a dependent source. So what we're going to need to do is use our mesh current method in exactly the same way that we've done before. Notice that uh, if you think of this as a cookie cutter, like we talked about before for the mesh current method, we have three main meshes, which are these guys right here. So what you need to do is basically label them as such, just as you did for the other problems. So there is I sub A. Um, here, big mesh here, call it I sub B. And then this guy right here will go like this, call it I sub C. And I'm drawing all of my mesh direction, uh, mesh current directions in a clockwise fashion. That's habit. But, you know, that's what, the way I'm teaching it. But technically, you could go the other direction as long as everything matched. We have three meshes. So let's go around and write the mesh current equations for each one of these guys. It should be no surprises. And then when we get done, we're going to figure out, well, we can't really solve it because we have this guy here. And then we'll, we'll figure out what the constraint equation needs to be. So 